Welcome back to Mastering Fusion 2.5. This video we're going to be doing the best object in Fusion ever. And I'm talking about the X Lua object. Credits to uh, Justin Aquadro for this one. It's like the best object ever. Truly, truly the best object. Why? Because it allows you to include literal code in Fusion. And, you know, Fusion is great now for visual programming and, like, having ma making it easy for new people. But, like, if you can't make the jump to a new engine and you would rather have a coding system that allows you to get things like recursion or, like, w way easier... Uh, control over f the flow of the code then X Lua is a great great object for that and you know having code in click team allows you to basically just leave the click team ecosystem entirely and it adds uh, it moves your problem solving to Lua. It moves your researching to Lua. Like, like Lua is way bigger than the the Fusion community, so it's way more documented. It's like it, it, essentially, it's way, way, way better to use code and like write an API for Click Team in Lua. So, uh, I mean. It would be great if uh, the developer of this would actually like continue development on this. I mean, I'm I'm not sure he might be. He might be like I've seen once a uh, GitHub repository for Xlua. So yeah, I don't know, but I think this is the best extension ever. So yeah. Uh, let, let's get into it. We can do anything from like a basic example, like hello world, to literally like anything. I mean, I, I guess not anything, anything, because like you can't really make 3D games. Like I, I, I want somebody to to write a Vulkan API for Click Team. I don't know if that's gonna work, but uh, regardless, it would be cool. Uh, right, let's get into Xlua. I have a Visual Studio Code uh, directory open here. I made a file. Um, right, so VS Code has a Lua extension that allows you to organize your code within regions. So regions are like uh, gonna make your life easier if you want to, well, slightly easier if you want to um, work with Lua and ClickTeam so that you don't have to copy and paste multiple files when you actually want the code to run here because like, you're going to have to either uh, run embedded scripts or use binary files. I think embedded scripts are better because, I don't know, binary files were kind of weird sometimes with me. I don't know. Uh, it's weird, but Xlua, best object ever, and you know, I only I only found out about its existence uh, at the beginning of the year, and I was like, "Holy shit!" And yeah, y as you can see, I cannot end like my my praising for this. So yeah, all right, let, let's actually write some shit here, right? So basic use case: let's print uh, "Hello World." exclamation point okay and we're gonna get this in here all right and we're gonna go to start a frame run embedded script main you can also like um, run it in here at start and well we got nothing cuz where where does it print well we can do that. We can have it show the prints uh, on print. There is an event, and we're going to 
sends the text to the debug window. So get the print string. Yep. And that's going to now show us print messages. So as you can see, that showed us hello world. Now, there is already a click team API. Uh, I think it's called mmfi.dll or something. Uh, mmfi.dll, okay. And I mean, I haven't like, played around with it too much. I, I saw that it can do something but it's not like that intuitive or that great to use so yeah and you don't you don't exactly have full control over it and what what I like to use xlua for is like handling files commands uh, data data is a big one like working with JSON files for instance like saving your game with JSON that is uh, way better than I and I, in my opinion. And just overall, uh, like procedural code in games, like procedural, procedural elements. See, for example, you have you have like a map, okay, and like the map needs to be stored in a file. And like, yeah, I know you can like do it with arrays and click team and whatever, but like. Using it uh, in Lua would be way easier because like you write code instead of having to fiddle about with all the events and everything. So, yeah, I mean, I can show you uh, guys what I made in other games with Lua. Like I have, I've made an example game before. Um, this this thing. I've made like a geometry dash clone with this and this this window right here this this was primarily made with Lua a procedural like window system so if we're gonna go uh, in the code for this uh, X Lua okay you see that there's there's a shit ton of code in here I, I spent a, a good amount of time just fiddling about with windows and if I, if I can find the folder for this, okay, so here, here's the code for that window system. As you can see, like it, it is way complicated. You will not be able to do this in regular fusion unless you are some kind of, some kind of, uh, I don't know, somebody who's got a lot of time, okay? Unless you're somebody who's got a lot of time, you wouldn't be able to do any of this. The fact that this exists is amazing. And okay, right, let's actually get into some practical examples of you how we might want to use this. So in uh, Click Team, how the object works is okay. Let's say you want to call a function in Lua. How do you do that? Well, you can do it a number of ways. My favorite is to just uh, run a string. So let's say uh, let's let's run function main like this. Okay. And remember, in function main, we print hello, right? So every one second, it's going to do that. Simple. Okay, guys, I'm back. I thought of an example for this. Uh, it's, it's basic as fuck. But all you'll see here, I mean, basic as fuck right now is kind of convoluted and complicated. But you'll see... Uh, I made made a simple thing with Lua here. That is U right there, and if I press W A S D, you can move. Okay. All right. That that that's it. That's what I made in like an hour. But um. Okay. Let me show you how I did it and what I did. So there's a few things that are going on. So. Uh, remember the print thing? I added an error thing as well, so that whenever this code throws an error, we can get it in the output of the window, uh, the debug window. And we have two different functions in our uh, main.lua file here. Um, so we have a start function and an update function. The start function was like 
it's meant to be like a start of frame event and the update function runs every frame. I made an array of characters and this character class right here, this is a character class. So, uh, it's very simple. <laughs> it's very simple, he says. Okay, uh, so in Lua you can do object-oriented programming like in any other language. Well, most languages anyways. Um, even if like Lua is more like data oriented and uh, procedural, you can still do objects, no problem. And you got th this character has a data and a position field. Um, the data field is like what's stored on the disk, and it's currently only this because I didn't really think of anything else. And here's you. Um, position. We've got an X and a Y, because this is a 2D game, all right? And new function. The new function is what allows us to instance the objects. It also allows us to inherit. So the way we would inherit a character is uh, we would do special, uh, like a special character would be something like special character equals character uh, dot, like, okay, call a new. And then we pass in something else equals zero. I don't know. Okay, and then special character is a different type of character. Okay, so, uh, so we can still like update and whatnot. Okay, right. Simple. But, um,. You know, I could make a tutorial series on, like, Lua. That would be great. I'll write it down, I think. A anyways, back to our character class. So we got a load data function, which opens a file and uses the uh, GitHub JSON library thing for Lua. I'll, I'll leave a link for this in the description. Right here. All right. And load data basically opens a file, uses the JSON library to read the file, and loads it into the data field of the character. Load sprite. Uh, this uses click team functions. So we, I, had, I made a new click team function called sprite load. And you know what? I need to. I forgot about um, registering MMF function in here actually wait uh, with one parameter you need to register these MMF functions for them to be able uh, to like for them to be compiled in the game okay uh, with three parameters okay we'll, we'll go over these in a minute so yeah. Okay. Uh, load sprite. This function basically takes in the sprite, uh, like file path, and it returns the fixed value of the active picture object it just created. And we have an update function similar to this kind of update function. Like it's supposed to run every frame. Um, where we basically call sprite set position self sprite id uh, position x position y so we have another click theme function called set sprite position and in it we start a loop for all these uh, character sprites and we check whether the fixed value of uh, the character sprite object is equal to the numeric parameter of index 1 in uh, the Lua, the Lua argument list, and we also set the position. And if the condition is true, we set the position to uh, par parameters uh, two and three, which are the x and y. Okay, and when WASD are pressed, I'm modifying the position by calling a string. Uh, we can see here. 
just by like characters one set position characters one position x characters y position y minus 10 in the w thing okay it's like how you would do it for uh just your typical movement in click team but like way more convoluted now why would you do this uh why would you complicate yourself like this well for a number of reasons uh if if you want to make a good game and like a very very complex game that requires some kind of advanced logic that you can't really code in with a uh, traditional click theme and you also want to be able to interface with click theme objects at the same time uh you would need to write an api for lua in order to actually get the support so yeah in like game development eventually where once you get advanced enough it's more about having a foundation in place so that you can build stuff on top of it and back back to the class the thing we only had left the set position function which i mean it takes an x and y and it sets the position x and y to those uh, given values oh yeah uh, if you want me to make a Lua tutorial series or uh, yeah if you want me to make a Lua tutorial series as well on this channel I could do it gladly in click team as well so yeah uh, I hope you enjoyed this video it was a very long one and I'm hoping to see you in the coming videos I have a lot a lot of shit planned for the next year and yeah we'll see where this thing goes have a nice monday afternoon